During World War II, the German government considered developing an intercontinental bomber called the Horton H-18. The project was a part of the initiative, which called for a transatlantic bombing platform capable of striking targets in far-off places, especially the United States, the home front of which was virtually out of reach from current generation German bombers. It is also said that even though the Germans were still a ways off from building their atomic bomb, it is not out of the question that an American bomber would have been utilized to drop such ordnance over American cities if they had the opportunity. The plan also included a list of 21 targets, which consisted of many large aircraft manufacturers on the East Coast. It would have been an attempt to halt the American Air Force. The H-18 was yet another one of the flying wing concepts proposed by the Horton brothers. Late in 1944, the German Air Ministry began investigating the feasibility of developing a long-range bomber to obstruct the United States' participation in the war by delivering bombs to American cities and industry via the Atlantic route. The major German aircraft defense players were all considered, but none could match the Luftwaffe criteria for range. Goring suggested that the 6,835 miles was the very minimum requirement. The demand to create such a bomber was presented to the Horton brothers, and they gladly embraced the challenge of doing so by exploiting their intriguing flying wing concept, which had in the beginning begun with unpowered glider tests quite some time previously. The H-18, however, featured a combined body and wing surface, lacked vertical appendages, and promoted good internal storage space that could be utilized for fuel and drop munitions, among other things. Many of the design elements established in the Horton Brothers' most notable creation, the HO-229 Flying Wing, were carried over into the H-18, which was still being developed when the war ended. And because an unbelievable range was expected out of the aircraft, the brothers evolved their existing HO-229 product by increasing its dimensions and adding additional engines, bringing the total number of engines to six, up from the original two. The BMW 003, or the Junkers Jumo 004 turbojet, would be the engine of choice, and it would be configured in two banks of three engines. The aspiration would take place through six portholes located at the leading edge of the fuselage, and exhaust would be directed over the trailing edge of the fuselage, creating a smooth overall contour for the design of the aircraft, with the engines located in the rear fuselage. The performance estimates included a top speed of 560 miles per hour and a range of 7,460 miles. However, none of these values were proven before the project ended. The H-18 was going to be a large aircraft with a wingspan that reached all the way out to 138 feet when it was all said and done. The aircraft had the appearance of a slightly elongated triangle when viewed from above. The cockpit was located at the point of the triangle and could accommodate a crew of three. The canopy assembly was designed as a greenhouse and provided excellent views of the upcoming landscape. The leading and trailing edges of the wings were softened and swept backward. The H-18 did not have any vertical surfaces, so it was decided that the control would be handled by a set of flaps integrated into the wings, specifically at the trailing edges. The wings would be made of wood and glue, the aircraft structure out of steel tubes, and the fuselage would be covered in metal. The proposed defense systems for the America bomber consisted of a single turret and two 30mm MK-108 series autocannons. The aircraft could neutralize any attempts by a trailing aircraft to intercept it. The turret was positioned directly behind the cockpit so that the crew could remain together and have clear lines of communication with one another. The additional defense was provided by a turret identical to the one on the dorsal fitting and positioned directly beneath it. This turret was also armed with the same ammunition and designed to protect the aircraft's vulnerable underside. The undercarriage could be detached to simplify the manufacturing and operation process, and landing was accomplished using a skid mechanism. The H-18 was chosen over other competing long-range heavy bomber designs in a meeting that took place in February 1945. 
The project was named H-18A, and engineers from Messerschmitt and Junkers were involved in getting the development process along more quickly. These engineers concluded that the directional control of the Horton design could be improved with the addition of a specialized vertical tail fin of the more traditional style that would be attached to the rear section of the fuselage. The brothers disagreed with the design decision and presented Hermann Goring with an improved concept with comparable dimensions but promised higher operational ranges because of the use of four Heinkel HES-011 turbojets. Goring was convinced by the superiority of this more recent design to place an order for its production as the H-18B. This model was lighter than its predecessor and had a more conventional wheeled undercarriage system that could not be detached from the aircraft. The aircraft was supposed to lack a nose landing gear leg and be supported through its multi-wheel main leg structures. This was supposed to simplify the manufacturing process by doing away with a more complicated approach to retracting undercarriage. Once more, the multiple person crew would be held at the apex of the triangle design, albeit now beneath a tidier canopy in the bubble style format, which promised superb views. Because the bomber's operational height would prevent Allied fighters' interception, defensive armament was completely discretionary and not required in any way. In any case, the Hortons advocated installing the necessary equipment to serve this purpose. In May of 1945, when the war in Europe finally came to an end, all of the work that had been done on the B model was scrapped. Even though there had been very little discernible progress made on it, because the building was not scheduled to begin until the fall of that year. The H-18B-2, also known as the H-18C, was supposed to have six BMW 003 turbojet engines under the wings and a dorsally mounted turret armed with two 20mm MK-151 cannons, according to one final revision of the design that was reportedly pushed by Messerschmitt and Junkers engineers. However, this particular revision was also discarded. Following the war's conclusion, Remar Horton resumed his work in Argentina. Although the H-18 program implemented during the war was ultimately unsuccessful. Through the two-person DIN-FIA IA-38 prototype, he was able to further his flying wing concept. Work on flying wing concepts continued during the years of the Cold War, particularly in the United States by Northrop, whose founder, Jack Northrup, had pursued flying wing designs for decades. This resulted in the creation of the Northrop YB-49, the precursor to the highly advanced B-2 stealth bomber of today. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time!